Has somebody died already? From the beginning? Well, the, th the thing is, though, is that somebody could have out-of-date information. All right. So, on the top. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have different designations for these islands. We're going to go top here. And we have Combi Master versus Monaz. Okay. On the bottom, we've got Uzi versus Carbo. On the left, we have Labode versus Beery. Okay, Beery must be the Gurjars because I don't oh, remember no. putting uh, putting Forge bushes here. And okay, he still gets them. And then on the right, we have Kingstone versus Levi. So Levi is the Saracens. Kingstone is the Aztecs. Interesting. Okay. And on the bottom, blue is... What is this? The Bengalis? I don't even know if they're good on this map. Uh, I don't know much about the Bengalis. Mongols, always a strong pick. Now, these llamas are actually deer. They act like deer, and they have the same amount of food as deer. Lobo de la Nieve. Oh, okay. So, Lobo de Nieve here is Ethiopians. No, he's Malay. I was close. And Biri is... Beery is Grijaras, and then Master is Korean, so maybe we'll see... Ah, maybe we'll see a tower rush from him. He's pushing in his deer. Okay, good. And uh, Monaz is Sicilians. Oh, the ultimate... You guys think we're going to see lots of towers on this island? Or tower versus donjon? Uh, yeah, they, they do look like llamas. No, they are. They're llamas. See if there are any still still left here, Juicy. Yeah, so you can... They're actually pretty close to the town center. But you can actually make uh, deer look like pretty much anything. Um, in this case, I'm making the deer look like llamas because this is South American themed. Okay, Levi bringing in his boar. I think that's his second boar. I don't see... No oh! Oh, what is this? Somebody came forward and laned. Now Levi wants revenge on the villager that did it. But uh, Kingstone's got his eagle here. And uh, Levi has a villager forward too. To help out with fights here. And I think Kingstone is forced back. Oh, Levi's going to lane back. Oh, I don't know if that's going to work. He's going to need his scout here to help out. Kingstone sees it and is sending his villagers up to get... Oh, she is going to die. Whoa, no, he de the boar. This is how you know you're watching 2K players. Oh my goodness. Wow. What a save. Saved the villager and got both of his boars, and now poor Levi is going to have to mill his javelina here. El Cid deer. So that's quite a bit of action early yes. on. That was fun. Okay, looks like we had a pause. Um, so Levi's going to have to push his deer. Hopefully he knows that these llamas are deer. Yeah, it seems like he does now. Sees him moving around and he's going to position his scout to sort of chase them into the town center. Uh, okay. Hello? Forward forward wood here. Uh, he has not done anything with this javelina yet. Alright, we got a fight over here. Scout fight. Nobody is up to feudal age yet. We could go we could cycle through to see if anybody is advancing. We've got a barracks from Master here as the Koreans. So maybe a two militia drush perhaps? Okay, the stone is back. It's it's exposed, but it's not really forward. But it is on the right-hand side, so this is going to be an important area for Monaz to secure over here. So he lamed it, JC. The boar here, also known as a javelina in this case, because that is the South American equivalent, uh, this was lamed. So these walls here, Kingston built around his villager, so the boar couldn't attack his villager. And then he attacked the boar and killed it, and then deleted a wall and then walked away. Yeah, now we get why they call UFC. Okay, so it looks like uh, Beery is trying to push his his llamas in, but uh, Laboda Leniev is uh, is messing with him, messing with his plans. Here comes the drush. He just wants to push in his deer, but he's not going to be able to now. There's a drush interfering with that. So when the players are close enough together, you can you can do that kind of laming. 
Now they're playing on a large size map. It's, it's the map is not quite as large as we wanted. We wanted to do a giant just because you know you do lose space from having all this buffering terrain here. Um, and we wanted to do giant size so they have a little bit more room. But there is a weird DE bug where if you generate a giant size map with two players, it will spawn without stone or gold, which is unacceptable. See. So we got some forward villagers here from Carbo. No, these are militia, sorry. They look like villagers behind the behind the forest. And somebody... Okay, we've got a couple people up to feudal age now. Red is up to feudal, and he is fighting that scout uphill because his scout gets extra damage and attack being in feudal age. And he is here with a two militia drush. Okay, and he is up against the Bengalis. So this gold getting quick walled. Uh, come on, come on, come on, quick wall it. Okay, he's just sending the boys. He's sending all the villagers. He's got a drush over in his walling, though. This is going to be annoying. And I think that blue is going to lose a villager here. Okay, tower going down. This is a really good tower. It might be too late, though. I don't know. I'm not sure. I guess there's a lot of villagers here, and that's why Carbo did not rush it. So they got a spearman. Uh, the man-at-arms will gladly fight that spearman. The spearman was looking for a couple hits on that scout cavalry. He doesn't get it. So Carbo is actually going with the Mongolian uh, man-at-arms. And this tower will actually do well to secure a wood line and to secure gold. So Monos is housed here. We've got so much action. Uh, we have a tower rush coming in from the Koreans. And yeah, so Monos is doing the, the right thing. And he's going to batter it down with villagers. He's made Sicilian scouts. And um, because of that, he can't... Gray can't really take a good fight here as the or Koreans. He? And we've got an emergency house coming down. It's like, well, okay, we're chasing you away, but now we're going to rush down this house. Because uh, he was housed. He really just wanted to prevent the tower from going up. So he's going to build... No, he's not going to build this tower. Um, Gray needs an answer to these scouts. He needs a spearman over here to help him get that tower up. And maybe he'll make one. There it is. Right there. So called it. But he is being chased around by these scouts. Uh, let's see what's going on over here. So we have an archery range from yellow. Okay, his camel scout is still kicking around. It looks like he did manage to get his llamas in eventually. And he has his uh, herdables garrisoned in the mill here. The drush is coming around from Labodi Laniev. And he's going to pick on this villager building that house there. I'm curious though if Labodi Laniev is... Is he just doing a drush fast castle? You know you can't wall on this map. They can just walk on the tidal pools and walk around. So we have a pretty big red army here. Mongolian man-at-arms and archers. So they are working on this barracks here. As Uzi does have a couple of archers out. Looks like he's not too worried about it. He's got a tower on his stuff. Uh, he is going to come over here and look for some damage. Maybe pick off some villagers. But he's not going to find these villagers going forward, unfortunately, for him. But he is going to come around this way. Maybe he'll annoy the woodline and harass that. What do we got over here? Okay, this boar, he's just not going to take it at all. He he never did anything with it. And he has to put a tower on his gold, too. Levi does. So it's been a pretty aggressive map so far. Doesn't look like anybody's been defeated yet. All right, so we got a tower, a cheeky tower from Carbo coming up. Is Blue actually able to see that? Because that could be pretty awkward. Oh yeah, okay. Blue knows it's there, obviously, because it's right next to his barracks. Duh. Um, but he's not doing anything about it. Uh, he does not have the gold that he needs to click up to the next stage, so he's going to have to secure a different gold or rush down that tower, and I don't think he wants to do that. So he needs to like build a wall out here and then build another wall over here try to secure that, or he can hey. sell stone. That might be the plan. Hey. So Carbo is taking forward stone here. I'm trying to look at... Um, I mean, he does have a pretty safe hey. stone back here, so it, it may not be that bad. Now, he's in... Oh, wow, Bill Pickoff. Who knows how many he got? Two archers here. Dancing around, trying to get another villager. Are they going to get this villager? It's going to be close. I think that, yeah, they got him. He gets two villagers with those two archers, so, you know, maybe he feels like it's fine. 
Hey. Okay, Beery is the first one to Castle Age. He's got a market. He's playing as the Gurjars, which are pretty OP, <laughs> in my opinion. So he better be Castle Age first. And Lepodia Liniev oh, is God. here. You know, he can just Oi. go around. And that's that's yep. what he's going to do. Uh, maybe not, actually. Oh maybe he's just like, I need to get out of here. There's too many camels. Just try to kill these archers and then just give up the skirmish. Cesar says this is good. Yeah, it is, it's going well, I think, so far. Nobody's been defeated yet. Oh, we have a massive tower fight here. Gray is building a tower, and and Orange... I think these guys are going to be in Imperial Age the whole game, honestly. Like, I think it's possible that these guys down here, whatever, could be in Imperial Age, and these guys will still be fighting over towers. So that tower goes up, shoots down a couple of Orange villagers. Now, Orange does have an advantage. He's got scouts here, you know. He's going to get Bill Pickoffs, too. It's just a mess. Oh my goodness, just just massive vil fight. How many villagers do these guys have? I want to check. So Manaz, Manaz is at 22 villagers, and uh, Gray, Gray is at 23 villagers. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look and see how many villagers Yellow has by comparison. Yellow is at 31 villagers, so if this were a normal team game, I feel like it would be kind of over. But Yellow just walking right around. This can't be walled. So Green is going to have to deal with that. He's got some spears ready. There are crossbows. And he's going to wall this. And he's going to wall that. Okay. So he's going to be safe for now. He may even want to wall this up here too. And you actually can wall to the edge of the map right here. Oh, Garrison, Garrison, Garrison. Okay, so the good news about it is that he garrisoned in time to keep the crossbows from coming over here, and he's got the spears to deal with these camels, actually, so he's alright. Uh, but there is a scorpion here, which he's going to have to deal with. Uh, the, there is no tower here, so he might have to simply relocate his wood line here. Beery is Castle Age, and how close is Labodin Milniev? Is okay, he just gets Castle Age himself. So he's got an armored elephant here. Okay, and he's going to relocate his woodline over here. That's probably the better woodline, honestly. Uh, he is in a he's in a tough spot. He's got these armored elephants coming out. Okay, so Carbo is still here. He's taking he's taking stone. Uzi seems to have stabilized. He's running out of wood on this forest, though. He's going to have to go secure another another woodline. Okay. Carbo is sending another wave of archers. Meanwhile, these guys are just vil fighting, trying to get towers and donjons up. Uh, let's see how many villagers they have. So, Matt, so, so Gray is at 18 villagers, and Orange is at Orange is at 26. So Gray is running out of steam here. The uh, the scouts are really paying off. ASAP says good map. I appreciate that, ASAP. So Gray Gray calls the GG and resigns. That was quite a fight. So that means that Orange is Orange just gonna keep playing. Oh, you know what? Is he Is he allowed to sling? That's is that something that was discussed? Yell Eric Q Eric 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 Kuana says, thanks for the map. You're welcome. Okay, red crossbow's in here from the combi team, Carbo. He gets two villagers. He's not able to get the third. These berries never got finished. And he does have the upper hand. Uh, tower coming up here for Uzi. So... I like the weird walling to the town center. Yeah, the, well, it's it's designed so that you can't wall except for, like, the very back right here. Okay, we have utter devastation. A couple of buildings for... for green going down. 
He's gonna need support for this mangonel though, so the cavalry don't dive it. He sends the spears out. Okay, and he does he does manage to quick wall that. He's got a couple of sh shrooms. All right, so they're gonna try to go around. They can't get through there quite, but they're gonna come in this way, and he's got to evacuate that wood line. There's a really weak shrooms of a rider though, and it it does get poked. And now he's gonna have to come back down over here. Oh man, it's chaos. Beery has the advantage. Okay, so Manoz, Manoz left after winning, so no sling from, from him to his allies. And meanwhile, over here, I think this is a match that we haven't looked at very much. Green is done, says Jaw00. Zero zero. Green is in a tough spot. Let's take a look at the villagers. So Green has 43 villagers, and Yellow has... 38. So Green actually has a villager advantage to yellow. That could change. There's a lot of military here, and there aren't that many spearmen, and he can't make more. He can't make more spearmen to deal with these Sharamsha riders, so whatever's here for spearmen, unless he made another one, I just missed it somewhere. These villagers are fighting off that Sharamsha rider, though. Villagers just fighting everything. So he's at 39 villagers now, and, um... Beery is at 39 as well, so they're actually tied for villagers. Uh, this battle over here, it looks like the Aztecs have tower rushed, and Green is calling GG. And resigns. So that means that. Yellow can resign. There's no point in him playing on. He cannot get to anybody else. And so now we've got two battles left. We've got a battle down here in the south. We got Uzi against Carbo. So can Uzi get a win for Combian down here? It's a question. He's doing a lot of raids with these Rathas. It's like Carbo has added a second town center. So he's kind of booming. And we had. It looks like there may have been a monk rush over here that got stopped by a castle, but it's hard to say. It's hard to tell for sure. Oh, okay, here's all the military. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Somebody monk rushing on this map. Tio Hippie says, best map ever. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed. How many rounds will they play? Three rounds. So the next round, we'll do um, we'll do two two v twos. This round was four. The next round is two, and then the last one is one two, one. Sorry, the next round is two one v ones. Uh, I'm just I'm just geeking out about this monk rush here. I think this is fantastic. Let's see how the micro is, how many mammal loops he can get. But Aztec monk rush is scary. Levi does not have very much room to expand. I mean, he's got a castle protecting a lot of his eco. He really needs a siege workshop to, like, push this away. I, I have a suspicion that these players are... The winning player is going to be the one that goes in first. I think that's what's going to happen. Got Rathas raiding around here now. Got a couple of mangonels. Some skirms to deal with that. But if these Rathas go melee mode... Now, do you guys know... Oh, Alright, we got a castle drop here. Oh, that was a good one. Good shot. Okay, he managed to flatten the man. Now he's got one left. He's going to repair it. And I think he just wants to empty off the Rafa health here. I don't think I think I don't think he plans to stop the castle drop. He's pulling the man back. Repairing it and a lot of Rafa is going down. Wow. So this town center is being pressured by at least one Manganel. Oh, there's another one hiding behind the rock here. So two Manganels. I know, I love Mamelukes. Beku Romeo says, really exceeded my and any expectations. Awesome map. I'm glad that it played well for you guys. So Light Cap coming in to snipe this Manganel. Eagles are running to catch up. Can they save the Manganel? No, they cannot. They do kill the Light Cap, though. 
And we got a castle drop here. What I'm interested in is what is Purple up to? He made a bunch of Mamelukes earlier. Can Purple... Okay, he's making he's making light cats, so he's nowhere near Imperial Age. Looks like he's got four on stone too. So maybe he wants another castle. Maybe the goal for him is to like run forward, snipe these mangonels, and then rush a castle up toward the center of the map. But uh, Kingston taking map control here with a lot of Aztec monks. There's two relics, four relics on each of these little mini Socotras, so. I don't know why he hasn't gotten those yet. Has he not scouted them? No. Well, okay, he scouted this one. Um, but uh, go for the relics, man. Aztecs are OP with relics. He's got the monks for it. Do you really need nine monks for those nine Mamelukes? It's eight Mamelukes there. All right, he scouts this other one, and he's he's in on it now. We're going to see a bunch of Mameluk conversions. Unless, he, unless uh, they all get deleted, which is basically what happens there. Okay, so the castle went up. We were expecting that. This town center is on fire. So our uh, Carbo is uh, is under a lot of pressure here. Uzi is going to get in with these Rothas eventually. You know, he could just go around. I'm not sure why he doesn't go around. There are skirmishers here. It scares him away, I think. And are any players... Oh, wait a second. Kingstone is imping. Kingstone is imping. He's going to make trebs, and then he'll knock this castle down. That's the prediction. Let's see how close um, Levi is. Levi is nowhere near him. It looks like Levi wants to fight this off in Castle Age. He's massing rams. Does not have much space for houses. Okay, Roth is coming in and deciding to, to pick a fight. Figuring, all right, come on now. I've got three mangonels. How how bad could skirms really be? Mangonite sniping a mangonel and then running Ooh. away. This town center is under pressure. All right, I'm hearing some woolaloo. Come on, And the relics are still. Nobody got the relics yet. I didn't even put monks guarding these relics. Samuel Roja says, congratulations, excellent map, it's very fun. I'm glad that you guys, that you enjoyed. Thank you. Your kind words mean a great deal. Okay, where is this going? This looks like a castle drop. Yup, a second castle. What does that castle get him? I guess it gets him a second target. He sees that his opponent is up to Imperial Age now. He's getting a trebuchet and he's getting block printing. Sounds about right. If you're doing a monk treb push. And these light cap run in to snipe off the monk. It's so hard, man. You basically have to do atonement monk battle against Aztecs. Alright, Cesar says the game 2 ID is on Discord. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, Purple calls it. He knows. He knows the castles are just going to get treb down. And uh, Kingston, the high score here. So Kingston is victorious. So Combi notching a win there. Avenging uh, avenging green and avenging gray. And then our final battle is down here. So that one did get to Imp, which, which pleased me. Skirms have to dodge the mangonels. Yes, exactly, Jazz Zero Zero. There should be 20 monks guarding these relics, and there should be a drain of gold. <laughs> That's another Tech Chariot map. I could understand not wanting to go for the relics in that case, but in this case, there's nothing there except your opponent. Okay, so we got a crossbow versus Rafa battle. Who's going to win? Now, I don't think these Rathas are considered siege units, so they only have two pierce armor. Okay, there's only one crossbowman left. He needs, to, uh, he needs to get out of there. There's nowhere really safe for him to take, to take resources. These Rathas are picking villagers off. He's got a Mangadai, though. And I think that we're going to see Red call the GG here. So we'll have two combi wins and two dark side wins, I think. Unless I did my math wrong. 
I don't think you can recover from Castle Drop on this map. Um. Well, I mean, Purple had his castle up first, and then this castle was built here. And there was a there was a town center here. I don't think I I, I would agree with that, Ja, but I don't think it's going to ever get there. I don't think your opponent will ever let you drop a castle on them. Okay, uh, what is this? Uzi is building a watchtower here, and there are a bunch of Mongolian skirmishers. And there are villagers just charging forward. What is this? Oh, okay, this is a castle drop. Wants to secure this area. Wants to get this wood. This is still in Castle Age. So maybe he built this tower here because he sensed that his opponent was going to drop a castle. And he just wants this castle up to secure this area of the map. There's some neutral berries here. There's some extra forest. There's a relic. Okay, now he's going to batter that guard tower down. Alvaro D says, congrats for the map. And thanks for support from Juan Perotti. Hey, no problem. Watching these epic battles unfold between high-level players makes it worth it to me. Thanks for the opportunity to work with you guys. Holy, another castle. He's on fire. What is this? What is this? What are Red's resources like? Well, Red may not have anything of anything else, but he's got 1350 stone. So what's the plan here? Just build castles everywhere? Alright, he's building a new town center here, and he's going to take these resources instead. Jose Eduardo says, heart, heart, heart. Oh, we got a lot of folks here. Great job, thank you, from Team Float, it says Spenny661. Venos mos asomar de part de el floto. I'm assuming that's a thank you. If it's not, just correct me, but I'll otherwise take that as a compliment. Asip says, is there a mod for the colored building's range? Uh, it's a setting, actually. It's one of your game settings that you can pick that enable you to see the range of the different buildings. Very useful. Endo says, greetings from Floda. Awesome map, bro. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed the game. We're still finishing this up because we were a little late to get into uh, the first game. But we're all good now. Uh-oh, he's got to be careful. There's a mangonel here. Mangonels are very good at denying castle drops. This would be a very good castle for him, though, if he could get it up. Um, he can't charge the, the mangonel either. So he's going to have to bail on that castle. Just delete it. Get your stone back. He doesn't want to, but he's got to. Because that mangonel isn't going to go anywhere. And Red just calls the GG. He's totally out of resources. Um... And he couldn't get this castle up. This castle would have been really annoying, though. This castle probably would have dragged the game on a lot longer. Alright, so uh, Daniel EPG says, Congrats, Tech. Awesome stuff on a successful map. Thanks for the map for the from the Flotagano community. Like the subscript and everyone. Oh, so he's telling everybody to like and subscribe. I appreciate that. 28 people watching now. Yeah, I usually don't... I, I'm lucky if I get 28 views on a video. He scripted it, so he named it. Well, actually, that name was Cesar's idea. All right. They probably already started the next match. Let's go take a quick look at the statistics, though. Blue with the most kills at 117. Manaz losing the fewest number of units. He only lost 24 villagers by feudal age. Um, buildings raised 28 buildings for, for yellow. So it's a, just a really intense... Uh, it, it feels like I'm watching Socotra. So Marco RCM says, Thanks for the map for the Juan Perotti com community. Hey, thanks guys for the love. Alright, let's 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 go and get that next lobby up. Cesar sent the link. Spectate games. Here we go. 4v4 with the remaining players. <clears throat> G. 
Two from Combi, two from Dark Side are left. Let's go, let's go. So we got Manaz playing as the Portuguese. Biri playing as the Tatars. Kingston playing as the Vietnamese. And Uzi playing as the Chinese. All right, here we go. Let's disable the fog of war so I have an easier time seeing. But there are only two islands in our estuary now. So there's a lot more space for mangrove shallows and crocodiles just loitering. Loitering in the shallows there. So in the blue, on the left-hand side, we have Beery playing as the Tatars. On the right-hand side, or on the, the right-hand side of the left-hand side island, we have... Kingstone playing as the Red Portuguese, Red Vietnamese, sorry. In the green, we have Monoz playing as the Portuguese. And in the yellow, we have uh, Uzi playing as the Chinese. They are strange civs. They went random civs, though, just for fun. And what do we got already? Oh, we got another laming attempt here. We saw this in the previous game. That boar is getting lamed. Oh, no. Hola. So what are they going to do about it? She could lame in that... She could actually... Oh! Whoa! Did you see that? He just stole the villager back, but he's trying to block it. Green is trying to block it. Oh my goodness. Is he going to get away? Alright, looks like Yellow is going to get his boar. But there is a big fight here. He's going to lose his scout. Green almost loses his, and now he's trying to steal the boar here. Oh no! Still gets the boar anyway. And with no scout, he can't block the villager. Oof. Brutal. Watch Beery laming. Oh, it's happening over here, too. That's that's a good point, boys. Yeah, similar kind of laming, except the scout is bringing that boar in now. Now, the, remember that you guys... that These guys are like 2k players. So, they have APM. They, it's essentially unlimited. <laughs> And they can do things that you and I could only ever dream of doing. So is is Beery known for being very skilled at laming? I mean, look at it. We just ran a loop around that rock. Kingstone is here trying to block it. Kingstone's like, I want my boar, please. No, he's just going to lame him back. Okay. What? Oh, he's going to try to block the villager now. Nah, he's going to get away with it. So, laming galore. Master laming. MBL confirmed. Alright, the good news is there are deer that you can push in. So there are deer here that uh, Kingstone can push in to compensate for losing the meat of that boar. Which is unfortunate. Another boar coming in for Monaz. This is going to be his third... No, second boar. His third boar is right here. Um, and I... And I believe Uzi lost his scout. So Uzi cannot... Unless he sends a villager for it. It's really not that far. What a night. Agreed. Okay, there is a goose here. And it looks like Beery is also stealing some some geese from Kingston. Kingston is having a rough, rough time getting all of his food in. But here we are with the scout. We are going to push those llamas in. Look at those llamas just sauntering. They're taking their time. Look at that. Okay. Gets that one. And here's the third boar for Monos. So the players have already played Flotagano once. So they've got a good sense of how far away everything is. So, they have a better feel for how successfully they can they can lame. So, what what are the guys that were lame going to do? U Uzi thrown down a farm. That'll that'll help recoup some of the food losses. It appears that he's pushed in his deer. 
so that should compensate for losing the meat of a boar, but that doesn't compensate for the fact that his opponent has extra meat. What do we got here? We got a forward villager from the Tatars. What is this? This can't be a misclick. There's no way. 40. Okay, they both have loom. Kind of smart. I don't know what this villager's doing here. And Kingston doesn't want to pick on it because his scout is a Dark Age. Oh, okay. It's a laming villager. It shot this llama. Man, poor, poor Kingston. He just cannot catch a break. Beery's stealing some sheep down here. Beery stealing a boar. Beery laming a, a, a llama. This is actually illegal in the Atacama Desert. It is illegal to honk at llamas. I know because I have a friend that lives, that works in the Atacama Desert. How he says if the that? llamas are standing in the road, you cannot honk at them. Because the Atacama Desert is the llama's home and you are an intruder. I was surprised by that. I was pleasantly surprised. Sí. Here in America, we love honking. If you're in America and there's an animal that's in your way in the road, and you honk at that animal, like people people will come up and they'll like honk with you at the animal. Like, Get out of the road, you stupid animal. You can't do that though. But uh, in this world, you can kill the llamas in this game and, and eat them. What do we got over here? Okay, we got Kingston being annoying with the scout. And what's Beery going to do with all that extra food? That's what I want to know. Okay, Beery is only just now going to push his llamas in. He should be able to push them in just fine. I don't know where his llama pile was. Maybe it was back here behind the rocks. Ooh, that's annoying. Okay, he is going to push them in, though. There's another llama hiding out over there. It is possible to modify the... Oh, no, okay. The llama patch is probably more like here. This llama just got spooked and walked over there. Okay, so he is pushing in his llamas. All right, so we got three players in the Feudal Age. Blue is actually still in the Dark Age. Okay, Blue has just hit Feudal Age. So he is 20... Uh, Minoza is 22 pop. Blue is 22 pop. Red is 23 pop. So low 20s, which is no surprise here. And, oh, wow. We have a very aggressive Man-at-Arms plus Towers play against Uzi, who is the Chinese. So, for Portuguese, the Man-at-Arms cost less gold. Okay, so he's making archers to deal with that. He needs to get this house up. He's gonna, he's gonna destroy that scout first. Just shank him. Depending on what it is, somebody will shoot it and have a taste of dinner. No joke, I know a guy who hit a deer while driving home from work, and it did a lot of damage to his car. I think his car was no longer, like, road legal after he hit the deer, but he could still, like, drive it to get himself home so he didn't have to get a ride. But the officer came, and the, the officer was like, yeah, go ahead and put it in the back of your car. So the guy put the deer that he just hit with his car in the, in the back of his car, in the back seat, and brought it home and, uh, and uh, sold it to a butcher the next day because he knew a butcher. Um... So you can, you can, yeah, you can definitely do that. This tower is at a disadvantage because it's downhill. Um, but there are a lot of villagers. So this, basically, what this tower does is this tower allows um, these villagers to batter down this watchtower, which would be out of range of the town center, without these man at arms killing them. So this is still a smart tower. It was a good, it was a good choice. Okay, so the players are kind of getting smart about it. He's figured out that he can wall over here. And I don't think anybody could slip through here. But I think that this is still open. Because there's a very thin ring of, um, of DLC rock that's all the way around it. But we'll have to keep an eye on this. Meanwhile, Red has some skirmishers and some archers in Blue's base. And Blue's archers are out of position. The skirm is out of position. And Blue just has a rough map in general, I think. Which is unfortunate. Let's see what Blue's resources look like. Okay, he is making more skirmishers. He's going straight skirm, which makes sense. And against this many skirmishers, you might as well just rush it with villagers. He needs... I don't know where his archers are, though. Why he keeps pulling them back? He needs, he needs his archers to come kill these archers. So that his villagers can kill the skirmishers easily enough. Now he's getting a little off track. Okay, but really messy, sloppy game. 
Emringis, Hasser. All right. Emringis, Gamada. And he's got an army of archers, skirmishers, Emringis? and villagers moving forward on red. Emringis, Salam. All right, you can bring, the, bring these back, Blue. I think he'll bring these back soon. He's got to. So let's see. Blue is at 38 villagers, and red is at 33 villagers. So, all right. So maybe blue feels like, hey, I've got a huge villager advantage. So whatever, you know, I'll just send these villagers forward. Good way to get parasites is Jaw Zero Zero. Nah, you cook it, kill the parasites. People actually here eat deer all of the time. Venison is very popular. Cookie Pirates is that way the animal doesn't go to waste. Now, if, it, if you, like, saw a dead deer on the side of the road, you would not pick it up and throw it in your car. Uh, because you don't know how long it's been there. Or what the history of that deer was. But if it's a deer that you just killed, then um, most people are most people would be fine with it. Okay, so lots of villagers going down there. Red is at 36 now. Blue is at 28. Oof. So there's a pretty big villager advantage for Salon. red. I'm not really sure why blue is still... He's got stone right here. Why isn't he taking the stone, building himself a couple defensive towers? I have a feeling that uh, Beery is not long for this game. Okay, Mono is here as the Portuguese. He's walling up. He's got a tower here. And even though these units could walk around here, they'd have to be in the tower's field of fire for quite some time. Deer are fine, but boars are dangerous. That's true. Boars are dangerous. Okay, so Monaz is taking stone, and that's why he's able to build these towers to help protect his base. Okay, Blue... Blue's still fighting against these skirmishers. Blue is Tatars. You know, Tatars could go scouts. Maybe they feel like the map isn't big enough for scouts, so it's not worth it. And blue calls the GG, and that way now Kingston can end. So Kingston has been a beast these past two games. Maybe he didn't notice the stone? Well, there is other stone over here. So I guess it's possible. So that leaves one fight then. So Kingston has had top score the past two games. He's been he's just been killing it. <clears throat> so now we've got green versus yellow. Both players are in feudal age. Let's see how far away people are from castle age. So yellow is about halfway there, and green green is still in feudal. He has not clicked yet, so he's going to be in trouble. Oops, wrong green. Oh, it's because green is taking so much stone. Green is heavy on stone. Tower coming up from Uzi here. Why did Kingston resign? Uh, there was no point in him continuing. He couldn't reach anybody else, Yo-Yo. There was no way that he could influence the outcome of the match. He killed his guy, and then he didn't need to continue. Okay, got some annoying archers here from Uzi. And we've got double stables, but they're not just any stables either. We look at Uzi's point of view. He doesn't know about those stables. So it could be a sneaky sort of thing. Uh, how far is Green from Castle Age, though? Okay, he's on his way. So that's good. And Yellow coming forward with a castle drop. This castle drop will deny this stone, and it will deny this wood line. Why? Eh, kind of. And it sort of denies this wood line too. So this castle is really just to secure this gold and this stone. And there are two stables back here. I'm really excited about these stables, actually. He's got secure stone, he's got secure gold. So if he can build up like a, a mass of 10 knights, 10 to 15 knights with plus two, and just come in here and charge and ravage everything, Munoz can actually win this game. He could have slung. It's FFA, so no allies. Ah. Yeah, we talked about that, Emu, if, if sling was allowed. Alright, these palisades are kind of late. Okay, so Uzi is scouting the stables now. 
and knights are going to be up. Castle, defensive castle. This is not a good castle location. You gotta cancel this. You gotta build this castle like up here or something. Secure some some resources with the castle. He should castle drop him back. Um, no, there's too many archers here. Okay, so knights are being created though. Oh ah. And the castle does keep his base secure, but I disagree with this castle. I think this castle should be, like, up here. And it shouldn't be now, it should be a little bit later. You could even consider, like, tower creeping this. Um, maybe that's not the plan, though. Okay, he's making piano cannons. And Uzi is here. So it's 42 villagers, Uzi has 41. So he actually is one villager ahead of Uzi. I'm gonna have to pick this one off, and then he'll be two. We get out of here so he doesn't lose his knights. These units are fully upgraded, and we got two raiders headed back, so Uzi's gonna have to deal with that. Cesar says the internet service is still going. That's good to know. Yeah, I see you're still here. Internet in the Atacama Desert is patchy and maybe not so reliable, but I'm glad that you're still here. Okay, so these knights should be able to make their way in. Oh, they find a villager, actually, and kill her. And they should be able to path right in. Yep. It's hard to wall. It was designed to be hard to wall. I do feel a little bit bad for Uzi in the sense that he may have been expecting it, but then again, he could have just walled, you know, directly across here. And now he's got knights in on his, on his wood. They take down two villagers so far, they're going to get a third. These knights, they have the first armor, they do not have the second. Alright, that explains why the air, they're avoiding arrow fire so gingerly. And they could probably slip back out the way they came. So Monaz is still in this, you guys. Um, Uzi had a really aggressive attack on him. He got a castle drop. He does have this gold and this stone secured. Uh, we do have villagers going forward, though. This looks like a castle drop. Yep. It's a castle drop. He's got the stone for it. If he can keep these archers busy... we got double towers here. Wow. <laughs> and he doesn't care about these knights anymore, I don't think. I think he's fine if these knights all die. It's getting this castle up on his opponent. So Jaw Zero Zero called it. So knights and organ guns. And all of a sudden, Huzi is in trouble. These towers are not sufficient to prevent this castle from going up. We got a counter castle drop. No way. No way. There's too many villagers here. And I think Manaz sensed that there would be a lot of villagers to counter castle. So he sent so many of his own. I think both of these castles go up. Um, but at great cost. Okay, so both of the castles are up. Wow. Alright, then the question becomes is who's going to get Imp first? So, Uzi, Uzi has five on food. It's going to take him a long time. Uh, and Munaz has six on food with a similar amount of food. So, who knows? Uh, the stone wants me to look at the stone count. So, green has 18 stone and yellow has 45 stone. So, neither one has very much stone. I kind of like this. I like Munaz building the siege workshop here. Maybe he feels like this castle is close enough to the other castle that he could prepare a ram rush. It, but it all depends. Like if his, if his opponent has a mangonel back here, a ram rush still won't work. But if the rams are underneath the fire of his own castle, then melee units cannot destroy the rams. One thing that we might see are uh, are actually petards. That could be really cool. Yeah, this villager is actually in range of the castle, I think, but... Alright, it does it does attack her now. It's like, I'll take that. And we have another castle over here. Um, Uzi taking, taking Manaz's stone over here. And I'm wondering if there's going to be, like, another castle drop, like, over here or something. Deny this wood. That would be super, super annoying for Monaz to deal with. Mana's looking for looking for a way in though. 
But uh, Uzi's transferred his eco over here beneath the protection of two towers and a castle. So, how far are people from Imperial Age? Very far away. Okay, we have some Chokunus here. These knights still do not have the armor. Hey, yo, yo, yo. I would castle the other side. Over here, you mean? Jaw zero, zero. So those Chokunu going down to some knights. I think one Chokunu may have survived. Okay, here comes the ram push with some petards to weaken the castle. Okay. Uh, Chokunus are actually decent against rams. There are repair villagers. Uh, this castle can shoot them, though. And uh, Uzi is in a tough spot. Chokunu killing the ram. He's just got to kind of stand back here with the Chokunus. He can barely reach the rams, I think. So Chokunus are great against rams because they fire multiple arrows. So even though each arrow is only doing one damage per hit, when you're firing five arrows, you're, do you're essentially doing five damage per hit. So it looks like uh, Munoz's push is going to be thwarted for now. He's got one petard in the castle. He needs more of them. He, I think he just needs to go straight to cards, or he needs to go up to Imp. And what do we got here? He's building a seed workshop. I'm not sure what's up with that. How, how far is Uzi? Okay, so Uzi could actually afford another castle right now. And it looks like he's going to build it here. So these guys have castle dropped each other, which is pretty freaking hilarious. He should have waited for four rams. I think he had four rams. But I think that the nature of where this gold is, is the rams could not path properly. And, okay, so Uzi thinks better of it. Sees all this military in this in this area and decides, eh, nah. Not going to build my castle there. So he's instead going to castle creep the farms, which will be annoying. There's not a lot of farm space on this map. And I think Munoz, he only has four on farms right now because he has to withdraw... And his, his stables are going to be destroyed now. Those stables are essentially useless. It's Petard range, not Imp. So Yo-Yo says this is better for Petards. I agree, but he hasn't been making Petards. He sent the Chokunu home because he saw the Ram probably. Alright, so the Piano Cannon is here, fighting the Chokunus. Okay, and they're getting some good... Again, Chokunu are good against units with high pierce armor because of their multiple projectiles. So he finishes off the piano cannons there. And this game is still competitive. It's not... We got 52 villagers for Munaz, and for Uzi we have 35. So the fact that Uzi is able to do so much damage with such a large villager discrepancy... I'm not sure what all these villagers are doing for... For Manaz, I guess they're working super inefficiently over here. Kind of all cramped up in one spot. If Uzi could get a couple Manganel hits over here, that would be that would be really juicy. Okay, so the ram push is gonna come from over here this time. Where there are no castles. Uh, looks like somebody released a bunch of petards on this castle though. This castle is quite injured. This other castle, we'll see if it's if it's creating more petards. It doesn't look like it's going to create any more petards, and we have petards released, and this castle is going to go down. Oh, wow. Well played from Uzi. Like Yo-Yo predicted, the petards resolved this castle situation. So Uzi with the, with the castle lead, and Munaz with the villager lead. This is anyone's game down here still. If I had to guess, I'd think that Munaz is, gonna, is going to pull it through, although he still hasn't gotten the armor for those knights yet. He's, he's so poor. It's such a messy, messy map. He just wants to keep these Chokunus busy so the Ram could have a good push on the town center, but it doesn't work like that. Is Uzi going to take this with, like, 20 villager disadvantage? So Munoz is at 52 villagers, and Uzi is at... 34. So he's 18 villagers behind. <laughs> I'm not sure what... I guess 
Munoz has a bunch of rams, but Chokinu are fantastic against rams. Dude, get the armor. Get the armor, Munoz. Sell some stone, buy some food, get the armor, and just clear these Chokinu. He needs a mangonel, maybe. I'm not sure. Looks like he wants to colonize this area. He's walling this area off, making it harder for Chokinu's to path over there. Uzi has yo-yo eco, that's right. 131 subs, let's freaking go. Wow. Thank you guys so much for the love. I did not realize Twitch doesn't give me notifications. Should add some monks. Always add monks. Alright, so uh, Uzi is building another castle here to secure this area of the map. And, oh, okay, the Rams, he wants to rush this. Does he have the armor on these knights? Okay, he does finally have the armor on these knights. Then, in that case, the knights might do something. So the Chokinus have the choice, do I want to attack the Rams? Or do I want to attack the knights? It looks like these Chokinu are going to play that whole garrison trick. They're trying to, trying to snipe the Rams here. These knights. These knights are going down, and Munoz calls the GG. What a great game. Holy crap. Uzi winning with the clownery here. 37 villagers against... 52. Alright, okay, fine. Technically it's Clown Eco on both sides, but the winner was the one that clowned harder. So we got two combi guys against each other. Well played. I thought for sure Munaz was going to get it. But Uzi with the great defense. I think this castle going down was actually the turning point of the game. Because when this castle went down, this whole area was no longer secure. And I think he kind of panicked, and he's like, I need to take these other castles down here. He had gold. I guess he didn't have... He had more gold over here. He had all the resources, really, that he needed. He just needed more farms. Asip says, GG. Seems like having good unique unit against Rams seems strong here. It's uh, Dark Side versus Combi. Oh, okay. So, let's see what happens, then. So Cesar has sent me the link to the final game. So we're going to go and check that out. And that is a one versus one. Oh, okay. Now, that's what I thought. Combi versus Combi. Can't push Castles versus Chokunu and Kipchaks. Yeah, what could Manaz have done differently? I think... Manaz needed a lot of mangonels. I think Manaz needed to invest in mangonels and throw down farms and go imp. I think that's what he needed. Alright, let's look at the statistics real quick. That Manaz with the with the most kills, he also had the most well, the second to most lost. So it was a relatively even KD from them. Villager high, 53 for Manaz, and um Uzi had 45, ultimately, in the end. So this one did not even make Imp. Alright. Yeah, Yo-Yo agrees. Try to buy Imp is the best way. Trebs and a lot of them. Portuguese do get good monks. Yep. They do. Alright. So now let's find the last game. The two combi boys against each other. We had a hard time loading into game one, but I'm glad that we finally, finally got it. Oh, all right. I just need to search for Flotagano. That works too. Or take the stone in the middle. Okay. Do you know if they've launched yet, Cesar? Oh shoot, that's the lobby browser, no wonder. Of course they've launched. Alright, let's find it. Let's find it, and let's load in. There's no way he goes imp with six farms. John Zero Zero needs to have a conversation with Yo-Yo Dude.
Yo Yo Dude goes imp on six farms all the time. Sometimes less than that. And enough gold. Faith is expensive, dude. Um, well, I'm excited to see the finals here. Facundo Altuna says, Alto Maps Saludos Ray. Well, welcome, guys. Oh, you guys have the ID for the final game. Excellent. I will plug that in. Thank you so much for the help. I've been having some hard times finding the games for whatever reason. Here we go. Excellent. We've got a winner. And I think we can spectate this one with Capture Age. We'll see. It's small enough. With, with a two-player game, I think you can do it. All right, here we go. Five hundred food is five minutes on six farms, says Jaw Zero Zero. All right, so we got Monaz versus Kingstone. So is it is it like a race sort of thing? Is that how how did they how did the combi guys choose who would be playing in the finals? Is it just whoever lives the longest um, gets to play in the finals? Yeah, I just say that Jaw Zero Zero because clowns like arena clowns will buy so much food. Um, it will not be uncommon for somebody who's in an arena, an arena clown to go imp on like four farms. All right, hype for the finals, you guys. There's, those are some great matches so far. This is like Socotra on steroids. It's fun. All right, let's go. Any minute now. Dravidians versus Vietnamese. I'm assuming that these are random sibs again. We actually saw the Dravidians win earlier. It's hard on non-arena maps, but not impossible. So El Patoed Barba says they are free to choose who plays the games because it's a show match. In the tournament will be quarterfinals, semifinals, and a final to find a champion. Ah, okay. So either team can, you know, they can choose who they want to put forward then. That's cool. Haven't seen any relics taken so far. All right, we are in. And where is the capture age? Okay, capture age is initializing as well. Let's go. So we are 1v1. We got a two-player matchup. All right. So in the blue, we have Manaz playing as the Dravidians. And in the red, we have Kingstone playing as the Vietnamese. So what do you guys think about this Civ matchup? Are the Dravidians the one with those Rathas? The ones with the Rathas? Oh, man, look at this villager walking in slow motion. Ugh, we've already got a scout fight, too. Oh, man, the lag... The lag. Alright, I'm actually going to close Capture Age. 
I, I am going to close capture it. Oh! And we will just watch it natively in the game, unfortunately. So it has to do with the map size. No, 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 no. Alright. So let's hit play here. Let's disable the fog of war so that we can see what's going on. And Kingston helping himself to the, sh to the geese. Both scouts are, are weak. Oh, man. Oh. Oh. Can he block the scout? Oh, he get, he, he kills Manaz's scout and gets away. <clears throat> oh, man. And then he kills Manaz's geese, and he's now he's running for it. Poor Manaz. He says, Re. Yes. Oh, is this a Re? Akal says you can edit the graphics settings in Capture Age to have it run a bit more smoothly, I think. I will look into that. Let me write that down. Um, edit graphics. Hey, welcome, Akal. In Capture Age to improve performance. Alright, let me write that down. <laughs> so we have a lot of food rotting here. We've got two geese and a llama. So that's 340 food that uh, Manaz does not get because Kingston lamed it from him. So laming very popular in this map. I have not seen anybody fish. You know, there is... There's still food here. Like, look at these shorefish. He could totally build a mill here, and it may not be the most efficient thing in the world, but a villager or two, he could take those fish. Actually, these fish would be better because he doesn't have to push a llama at the same time. It'll be more grainy, though. Ah, that's fine. We're okay with grainy. Gives it, like, a rustic old feel. Wasn't the water azure before? Ah, somebody noticed. So, Jaws 00, yes, I did modify this water to use muddy shallow instead of DLC new shallow. And I sent Cesar the updated map today. So it looks a little bit greener, in my opinion. It looks like it fits better with what's up here. But it wasn't really a substantive change. The only substantive change that I did uh, was I... I disabled the players from being able to build docks in this starting configuration. Like, I physically removed the build dock button so they can't do it. Okay, so this is actually decent berries, I think. It's a little exposed, but he could, like, wall across here. Um, Monaz has lost this food down here, and he has not... Sorry. Uh-oh. What is this? He has not found these other sheep. Sorry. No, don't... What is this? Guys, what's going on? What's Monaz doing? He's at 18 population. He's got a bunch of villagers queued. What's... What's the plan? Guys, does anybody understand this? What, what is this? You can't douche on this map. The elevation doesn't allow it. What does he want? What's he looking for? He just wants to interfere with the deer pushing. Kill the llama. He can't take the llama because it's in range of the town center now. He's just going to take Kingston's llama. Hey. He wants to... I. What is that? This is crazy, man. Crazy. No, it can't be a douche. This is insane. Manaz is just like, man, you've hurt me bad enough. Can he not find the food? Maybe there was like, he wanted to, he wanted to do a re and they didn't, he didn't allow it. Or maybe he's just messing around having some fun. I don't know. These villagers seem to be killing the houses pretty quickly though. Which is strange. So Manaz is still making villagers. He's got six on food. And he's tearing these houses down. And Kingston... Kingston has no map control. Okay, they have loom, at least. And he's just villager fighting. 
this villager going away. Uh, Monoz needs to, needs to, yeah, he gets it. Wow. Monoz is a king at bill fighting. Is this Monoz's strategy is to just bill fight his opponent to death? The re was allowed, but they're like, we're going to keep playing. So why did they want to re? Do you know why they wanted to re, Cesar? Okay, he's going to pull that villager back and take another bill fight. Oh, Scout goes down. He saves her. She's going to make it home. She's going to make it home. Should I put more, should I put like lions or predators or something like that on this island? Okay, so Kingston is feudal age. Okay, that villager does die. And Munoz is at 26 villagers and Kingston is at 21. What happened? Just a really poor vill fighting situation? I mean, I could understand like being down some villagers because you were advancing, but that's a big villager difference. He needs to get out of there. Okay, villager goes down. And this is not worth it. It seemed to happen after all this meat was killed over here. Was there some kind of laming rule, maybe? Somebody broke? What? I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. All right, so Kingston is at 25 villagers and Manaz is at 28. So Manaz still has a villager advantage, but he is forever dark age. And that villager is about to go down. I don't know. Maybe he's doing it for the show. He knows that there are a lot of people watching Juan Perotti right now. He's got a huge farming eco back here. Oh my goodness. If he can... I don't know. Like, this is a lot of farms. If he can somehow stay alive, he could maybe FC off of this. Maybe that's the plan. FC and have a ton of extra food. Sorry. Okay, what is this? Kingstone is trolling him back. He's gonna try to wall that out. Oh no, the trap! I don't. Maybe this was like get get Kingston to be overconfident and send stuff in to die. Now you can't wall, and I guess that means you can't wall your opponent's economy into your town either. Non tayar. Non tayar. Okay, so Kingston is gonna get away with most of it. Just like, what is this, guys? Come on. Um, I think they're just having fun at this point. Did Manaz do Drush? Yeah, he drushed with uh, he drushed with ten villagers. I think it was like eight or nine villagers he drushed with. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it, Yo-Yo, dude. It's crazy. He was far behind, but he was really good at microing the villagers, so he actually killed a lot of villagers with his villager drush. Okay, so Minaz is feudal age. Now what? Varrick's and archery range is going up, and a blacksmith is going up. He's got to bring this villager in to safety under the town center. Trade it out. Have some different villagers. Send these healthy villagers out to the, to the fields. But just a massive bill fight. Yeah, I didn't. I don't understand. I think they're just. I think they're just having fun. Okay, skirmishers coming out. Let's deal with the archers. Did your radians get some kind of villager bonus? I don't know about. Guess we could check. Um. Barracks technologies cost minus 50%. Skirmishers and elephant archers attack 25% faster. I don't see anything here. Receive 200 wood when advancing to the next age. I don't see anything that would benefit a villager rush. So I'm not really sure what's Why going on. The skirmisher attacks faster. Sorry. 
just a big old villager fight. Nan tayar. Don't tell me this villager from Kingston is gonna get away. No, she's gonna shank him. All right, there we go. So Manaz is at 31 villagers and Kingston is at 34. So somehow this game is still competitive. Why isn't there an elephant skirmisher? That's a great question. It seems like maybe a maybe a, a javelin is too big to carry on the back of an elephant. Too big and heavy. I don't know. So. Kingston is nowhere near Castle Age. Munaz is nowhere near Castle Age. So Kingston coming home. And Munaz starts to build the tower and then decides... Alright, he's actually going to build it here. And Kingston, of course, sees it. So the villagers are coming in to batter it down. Oh, quick wall. So, yeah, defensive tower. It's the right thing to do. Both of these towers will go up, I think. Unless this gets battered down. Although, he's actually building it at the same speed. Sorry. Or In even faster. Sorry. Hey, sorry. So, this tower 86. So, towers go up. Sorry. And sorry. another villager goes down for Kingston. So, Minos is at 36. Kingston is at 37. So similar villager count. He needs to save these villagers, bring them back, and give them something to do over here. The day that there will be an elephant pike, I will finally use them, says Yo-Yo. Well, they would counter other elephants. So, I wonder if Manaz is intentionally trying to distract the fire. Oh, interesting. Oh, he sees it coming. Hops the villagers out. Now are they going to have a, a battering contest here? So we got battering villagers on that tower. He's garrisoning new villagers. So Kingston is going to defend this tower rush. What are those supposed to be? Elephants tro throw projectiles with their trunks? Or maybe you could have the elephants like spit um, water out of their trunks. You guys know how elephants can suck water up into their trunks and drink that way? You can have an elephant warrior that sprays water out of its trunk. So we got more skirmishers here from Manaz. Kingston is just out here, I think, scouting around with a single skirmisher. Uh, look at this huge farming ego from Manaz, though. He's got 16 on farms. He's not making the same mistake last time. Where it seemed like he was Portuguese, and he he didn't have enough farms to do what he needed to do. So now he has 17 on farms, and he's getting wheelbarrow now. He's on gold, so I think he's thinking about Castle Age at this point. Uh, Kingston, let's see what Kingston's got. It's got a decent population. 53 pop. Manaz is at 51. So 40 villagers for Manaz and 43 villagers for Kingston here. And Manaz building a cheeky tower. <clears throat> just to just to pressure this lumber camp. Just be annoying. Yeah, it doesn't want to fight that there. He needs to take a fight with these skirmishers, but the Bengali the Dravidian skirmishers fire faster. So there's not much he can do about this tower for now. But these villagers are in range. I'm surprised that none of them have died yet. Man, these villagers must have to withdraw. Oh, this guy choosing a bad path, though. Oh, Manaz trap! Manaz with the trap! Ouch! So now what? What's next from King... Oh, Kingston is going scouts! Let's go! So he's got a stable here. Does Manaz know about that stable? He probably should because, um... Yeah, he knows about it. Because the map is so tiny. Okay, so the difference is that Manaz is not... He's not going to invest in scouts. He's going castle. 
So Kingston needs to make these scouts count. Otherwise, he could be in a rough position. Scouts are powerful. Okay, these villagers are moving out across the map. Manaz does not have the stone. So what is this? It's not a castle drop. Manaz is going to lose his forward here. Alright, so Kingston needs to snipe some villagers here. And he does. He gets one villager. He can get a couple more, too, with these skirms. He's killing villagers left and right. Um, interestingly, Kingston is battering this, this house down, despite the fact that the tower is perfectly accessible. Right here. And so, I don't know what this is. I think maybe Manaz is using the lives of his villagers to buy time. I, I really do think that. I think this is part of Manaz's strategy. Cesar says, 135 YouTube subscribers. Yeah, I really appreciate the referral from Juan Perotti. I had, I had, I think, 93 or 94 before tonight. Okay, so Manaz is going to get to Castleage, and I think he'll get 200 wood immediately, because that's their Dravidian bonus. So he'll be able to build a stable, maybe, and make elephants? I don't know. Um, thing is, Kingston has feudal military here, and Manaz has essentially no Castleage military. He's got a couple of spearmen, and that'll really help him out. But these skirms could totally camp the base of this tower. And uh, Manaz has a ton of food this time. And he's putting down a market, which I think is smart. Does he get... Is that Bodkin coming in? Yeah, that's smart. I would still camp the base of this tower with all these skirms. So Kingston has to back up. How far is Kingston from Castle Age? Uh, he's got a little ways to go. He's just killing villagers, really. Villagers are following. They should probably change course. Got a bunch of low HP villagers from Manaz following Kingston. I think he needs to correct that. Alright, yeah, he's pulling them back now. Uh, she is going to make it. <laughs> so does Kingston have any plans of going Castle Age? That's what I want to know. Kingston is on his way up. Did a little work at the market. <clears throat> Went to market and bought some more food, I think. He's got a lot of wood. Taking stone. So what's the villager count? Kingston with 50 and Manaz with 39. I, I feel like Manaz's strategy of buying time with villagers... I just... I, I don't get it. I don't understand. He's a much better player than I am, so he would destroy me in a 1v1. So maybe... Maybe there's a good logic to it, but Sorry. I don't understand it. So Kingston coming back here with some archers. Just going to camp the skull. Alright, there is a skirmisher chasing them, though. And it's a Bengali skirmisher, too. So the archers decide not to stay. We've seen Kingston do this in the past. Like, he's moved two archers through. And just pick off villagers. Just be super annoying. Because Kingston doesn't even want to fight this. He's just patrolling his units, waiting for the upgrades. All right, looks like Manaz is going to go crossbow. He's making... He's Look, he's emptying the coffers here. Filling up the production queue with crossbowmen and skirmishers. And the plan is to just overwhelm his opponent with ranged units. Vietnamese have an HP advantage, I believe. Um, but it's minimal. 30... Oh, actually, it's not that bad. These are regular skirmishers. So, okay, Siege Workshop. I think that that's smart. He's getting Elite Skirm, Bodkin, and, and building the Siege Workshop and making a Man Canal. 
and Manaz is building a siege workshop. So I think these guys are a little bit more tryhard at this point. It's the final game. Who wants to be declared the champion? The the ultimate flota show match or championship. Longsword switch was needed, says Yo-Yo. Um, maybe, but Kingston can just as easily make archers. And longswords are very food intensive, so it would have been tough to get up to the next age. So Kingston is out with the mangonel first. Oh! One for one! There we go! <laughs> Nobody got anywhere. Oh, but Kingston has another Mangonel out in time to chase these skirmishers away. Manaz is micro. He's doing a better job with the skirmisher micro. The Dravidian bonus is helping them with the faster firing, though. Okay, another Mangonel comes out. Uh, takes a shot at this Mangonel, but misses. All right, come on, shoot. Okay, so he needs to rush a repair villager forward to have an advantage, which he does. So Manaz is at 47, and Kingston is at 54. So all things considered, it's really not that far apart. We saw some booming, some extra town centers go down in in the first game, and I don't think we've really seen any any more since then. I just don't know. I don't. I don't think you can you can build multiple town centers on this map. So these knights do not have plus two yet, so they still will be vulnerable to large amounts of ranged units. Or modestly large amounts of ranged units. We need something else from Manaz. Because now that his opponent has transitioned into Mangonel plus knight, that's pretty dangerous for an army of skirmishers. Elephant Ram here would be insane. Maybe, Yo-Yo. Maybe you should sign up for the uh, for the Flauta tournament. I think I don't know. Maybe they only take Spanish speakers. I'm not sure. I think they should take everybody though. It would be logical. Oh wow! Doesn't get anything there. Dodges it from three mangonels. Are you serious? Wow. Good micro from Manaz. This mangonel has definitely paid for itself. Gotten one other mangonel and then enabled these ranged units to get the last. So what is this here? What are these villagers for? So we got a good mix of ranged units here. It's enough to keep the knights at bay. Kingstone is going to need the second armor, but he just can't afford it. Elephant monks. Well, Yo-Yo, in the first game, we actually saw Kingston. I believe it was Kingston. Go, Aztec monk rush. Okay, repair villagers rushing forward to deal with that mangonel. I think he's just going to micro down this knight at this point. Okay. Oh, he's playing with fire. Dodging the mangonel shots. Oh. Ouch. Okay, but I mean, he took most of the threatening gold units out of the equation. There's a single mangonel here. And there's like, I guess there are some skirms that could deal damage to villagers, so he's going to have to pull back. But that wasn't so terrible of an exchange. We do have the first elephant being created somewhere by Kingston. There it is. A Vietnamese battle elephant lumbering out across the map. He needs to make the elephant rams. I mean the elephant monks. And Munoz is just villager charging this mangonel. What is this? Sending every villager in his eco? What? Manaz is at 41 villagers. There's no way that he's out of this. But he probably would be after this. Alright, there you go. Get out of there, man. It's closer than it looks. Kingston is at 61. And Manaz is at 37 because of this charge. You know, it really wasn't that bad before that charge, I don't think. Somebody that can see everything. It's Kingston's resources, looks like. Alright, Kingston is still making more stuff. 
making knights. These villagers are just pecking away at the knights. The knights have enough armor such that they only take one damage per hit from the villagers. Oh, the mangonel killed by his own, by his own, uh, or the, I should say the, the knight killed by the mangonel. These villagers, they hate mangonels. Here they come. What are they doing? All right, now it's time to go. We've lost half our villagers. And Manaz calls the GG. Well played. Good games. Fun game. I don't know if the winner gets of this game gets anything more than um, whoever gets second place. But GG, well played. So there you go. UFC show match on Flautagano. Jaw00 says, what if you research a tech that would make the elephant monk trample convert? That would be very scary. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you felt like the the games were competitive. It's it's a it's a it's a wild map though. Essentially It's essentially Socotra. Very similar to it. Not exactly the same. If um the folks have any ideas about things to improve about the map, things to change, tweak, you think would work better, let me know. I'm always looking for that kind of information. Asip says, thanks for the stream. Thanks for being here, Asip. Part of the reason why the stream was successful. Yeah, it was fun. For sure. And the geese out here lived happily ever after. The crocodile lived happily ever after. All the carnage unfolded on this island. I'm looking forward to seeing the games where people start on in these areas out here. In the mangrove shallows. And then they have the option of landing the big islands. That will be fun too. Let's take a look at the statistics. All right, so Kingston getting 135 kills, losing 95 units. Manoz with the largest army of 30 to Kingston's 17. Similar amounts of resources collected. Kingston has a slight advantage though, probably 2K more I would say approximately, 1500 to 2K more between food and, and wood. So stone collected, similar amounts, and similar amounts of gold collected, actually. Another game ending in Imperial Age, or in Castle Age, that did not make it to Imperial Age. Tio Hippie says, great matches. Thanks for being here, Tio. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed. It was It was very aggressive. It was a lot more aggressive than I thought it would be. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised. The map was smaller, too. We uh, we wanted to do it on giant size so that the islands would be a little bit larger. But um, there's a weird DE bug where sometimes it doesn't generate resources, like stone and gold for players, if the map size is giant. Yeah, it was fun. Villager high of 64 for Kingston to 48 for Manaz. One castle for Kingston. Where did he build it? Okay, it was just a defensive safe castle over here. We've seen some pretty, pretty insane castle drops on this map. And we can see the villager rush right here. I think Manaz at this point realized, eh, he got me. And then rushed in with the villagers. Lost a bunch. Jazzy said it's the bug with too much beach on the map. Probably. Wait, what? There's a bug with too much beach on the map? It's bizarre. I'm glad that you've heard of that. I'll have to ask you about that in the Discord later. 
All right, everybody, thank you so much to the folks who came and tuned in to the stream for supporting the channel. All the new subscribers that we got from Juan Perotti, very generous of him for the referral. It is our sincerest hope here that the map played out the way that everybody was hoping and expecting. But if there are things about it to improve, please let me know because we can always tweak things. I um, appreciate you being here and for supporting the channel, giving a little bit of recognition. This is the, the highest profile type matchups that I've ever had on maps that I created. Uh, there was a show match between Bakht and ACCM. Uh, that was that was pretty good, <clears throat> but they played more they played more maps for less money. This is more money on a on a single map, so it's uh, it's pretty cool, you know, having having people compete over maps that you make for real life money, like it like it's important or like it matters somehow. So it's it's a really neat experience, and thank you for being part of the the opportunity for that. So I'm going to end the stream here. I might be on for some age later. I'm working on programming some bots for the server to make the server a little bit more fun and interactive and help us organize it. Uh, but I do hope to get back to scripting soon. Got a lot of great map ideas. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I've been Tech Chariot and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much.